Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Kimmy. And this is Kimmy from You Can't Win in the Narcissist Courtroom. And here is her story. Hi there, Ollie. Best wishes to you for a healthy and cheerful new year with much success for your channel. I know the past year must have been a challenge dealing with the death of your mom and her sister and the other characters involved. I have to tell you that I am really amazed by your insightful ability of perception into the situations brought forth to you by your viewers. The wisdom you possess comes from within and is a gift that I'm grateful that you share. No bull approach is at recognizing at and recognizing issues at the root. I've been following you since your first vids. At the time, there was not much here on YouTube land, in YouTube lab dealing, land dealing with the issue you tackle. I was just beginning my journey to figure out what the hell I endured all my life. As you know, my mom, Big Les, was very was a very abusive narc. Because of this, I suffered great, greatly my entire life. She continues to try to reign her power over me as her last attempt just before Christmas. By the end of summer 2016, the last of the people I allowed to live in my home over the years were gone, and I was left with myself. I enjoy my privacy, and it finally came. That autumn, I quit smoking and drinking and began an exercise program. Being overweight and seeking more, a more healthy life as I'm getting older than I began, than, than I, than, than began writing again. Fourteen years ago, I was working on a book, I dreamt of I dreamt of for years about the struggles I endured through childhood when I was married to a psycho that deleted my work off our com, off our computer. Months of time editing were lost and gone was the motivation to write ever since. <clears throat> so back to my quest for health, I was doing yoga and injured my knee pretty bad. I was then unable to exercise with no outlet of smoking or drinking either. I turned to food. I was digging into my childhood and continued to write. I became really depressed. I ate, I wrote, and felt like a broken soul with no purpose. Life was a daily struggle. I had gained 70 pounds by the summer. The person I thought was my friend never helped, and I was sinking. I was unable to care for my garden, so I, I so loved. I had to rehome my beloved dogs as I could not care for her. I was stuck. Stuck in an ugly mess of me, I was dying, inside and out. That summer, I struggled to just meet daily self-care. I tried to write the ugly of the past and was falling deeper into a sludge of emotions that had its death grip on me. i have been down before in my life, but this was as deep as one can go, I think. Just before Thanksgiving, my son took me shopping and I needed to use a motor cart. It horrified me as I foreseen what was the beginning of the end. 55 years old, not sure if I would make 56. A week later, a woman came to my home with essential oils to pry me out of the core issues I was dealing with. She asked me if I have ever forgiven myself. I could not answer her, which gave me the answer. I have always considered myself independent and prided myself on it. I was always trying to help people and thought I was a good person for doing so. Self-reflection over the next week brought me to a greater understanding of my reality. I was hiding the truth from myself. The truth that all those people I was helping over the years and allowing to come into my home were really just a distraction for me, and without them, I whirled out of control. They were also vampires. They are also just vampires and users. Ultimately realizing how codependent I am, never even realized it. As a result, I was st stuck in a victim modus operandi that was a huge breakthrough for me. And the truth began to flood into me rapidly over the next few days. I was at a crossroads, either do or die. My whole reality changed pretty much overnight. I began to accept the truth, how I was allowing people to use me, how my role in life dictated the outcome of situations and not blaming the assholes. Right, B 
because until you can recognize that all these people are using you because of your past, until you can recognize that it's not the asshole's fault for, for coming in. It's your fault for letting them in. And by say fault, I don't mean you're doing it deliberately and you should be shamed on it. But it's on us to keep them out at this point. Once you've hit your crossroad and you realize where you are in life and what the deal is and the mask is off and the clouds are lifted and you can see these people, these users, for who they are. You can't blame them. You blame the one who broke you, Big Les. That's where the blame goes. The blame goes on the narc who broke you. Not the narc in front of your face. They're, the narcs in front of your face are the symptom of the abuse. They're not the abuse. They're the symptom of the original narc who broke you, your mother. Once you understand the original narc who broke you and when you were broken, once you understand that, you can keep these assholes out of your life. Because then you can spot them a mile away. I had to accept the truth of my past and stop wishing it was different. Give up trying to please others for, for a sense of self-worth and love myself by taking care of myself. That woman with oils was the catalyst. At this point, I do not feel as if I was in control of what was happening, but almost suddenly let go. I accepted my past and let fucking go of it. No more emotional revisions of the ugly past. Childhood trauma that followed me all my life. It felt like I was saying goodbye to a former self. I was, and I was, and I suppose I was. Yeah, that's really what we all got to do. We have to kill. You have to kill off that victim, that victim we carried around for so long that was created by the narc. We have to kill off the victim that was created, the victim inside of us. The, the, the un, the, the, what's not real, the, 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 the falsehood we have been living, that life we have been living that is not real, that was created by the narcissist because we don't even know who we are. We have to kill that off. That has to be eliminated. <laughs> then one morning I woke and was flooded with tears. My spirit forgave Big Les. It was not a conscious thing. I was in awe as it was happening, as I just cried. Never in my life, even a day prior, did I think that would ever happen. I cannot explain it, but do, but do know that since then, I have been able to begin forgiving myself. Okay. So, if you're forgiving Big Les, so you're forgiving, so you can forgive yourself, it's not going to work long term. It's going to come back and bite you again. It's going to come back and bite you again. Because you're going to keep getting more and more clarity the longer this goes on. And now that the mask is off, there's going to be things that, I mean, that are going to pop up that you don't even realize when they're popping up. You can't control it. And it's going to bring you back. Okay. And if you tell yourself you're forgiving Les, Big Les, and by forgiving Big Les, you can forgive yourself. Okay? That is all hindered. All of that is contingent. It is a very, very weak deck of cards. Weak de deck of cards, house of cards, built on a shitty foundation. Because the shitty found the foundation is your forgiveness of Big Les. It never works long term. Right now, it might be working for you, and I'm sure it is. You have to ensure your forgiveness of yourself is not linked to the forgiveness of the narcissist. It can't be, because that is a shitty foundation that is going to crumble. It just is. I started the keto diet December 12th as I was desperate to lose some weight and regain a bit of mobility and reduce the physical pain I was in. On New Year's Eve, in the cold rain, 
I burned all the evidence I had been keeping over the years since back to my childhood of Big Les's wrongdoings. Big mistake. I think what you're doing is you're trying to link getting rid of all this stuff with losing weight, with getting healthy. And one can't... I understand why you're doing it and it might make sense to you and it might make sense to a lot of people. You need to hold on. You always look. When there's a criminal case, the evidence is held on to for years, decades, sometimes. Evidence is never destroyed. Never, because you're never going to know. You never know when you're going to need it again. This seems like you are you are banking your health and your recovery on this forgiveness model of big lead, and it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. What happens if you get triggered again? And you will. Something's going to happen. And then you want to fall off this diet and you can fall right back into the trap. And now, now you don't even have the evidence you had. It's gone. And now you're mad at yourself for getting rid of the evidence. You could put it away somewhere safe. You could lock it in an attic, in a basement, in a file cabinet where you don't have to look at it. But don't destroy it. Never destroy the evidence. Never. That's what the narcissist wants. <clears throat> I'm really concerned here. Diaries, letters, cards, old pics that gave me bad feelings and even all of my writing. Poof, I let it all go. As I stood there soaking wet and the last of my burn was flaming, I thanked Big Les for being my greatest teacher and said goodbye to her. I felt liberated. I began creating boundaries and took control of my life and it's empowering to say the least. Today I'm down 30 pounds and feel good, back on my bike exercising and walking in the market. The inflammation and arthritic pain is gone and I feel like my life is just beginning. I have hope for me. I wrote this to you today because I hear the same story with others over and over. I want to share in order to give others hope that change can happen and it's possible to escape the prison of pain. It seems to begin with acceptance and, f and, follow and following letting go. Hugs and love to all the survivors out there. Sincerely, Kimmy. Well, Kimmy, I'm not trying to rain on your parade. I'm not. Because it is very important that you lose weight and you get healthy. And as you can see, the weight does so much to your... Being overweight, it does so much bad to your body. And you're already... Your arthritic pain's going down. So, I don't want you to backslide. But I, you cannot... You cannot attach your recovery to the forgiveness of the narcissist. You just can't because there's going to be things down the road that's possibly going to pop up. And you never, ever, ever destroy the evidence. And I, as tempting and as much as sometimes you don't want to look at it, God forbid you need it. God forbid you need it. Then what? Then what do you do? Okay? Make sure you're still not trying to please your mother somehow and make yourself better by pleasing her and appease some kind of guilt that shouldn't be there in the first place. I mean, honestly, that's kind of what it sounds like, Kimmy. So, I want you to continue to be healthy and lose weight and, and, do, and, and do all that. You have to do it for the right reason, and you're going to have to detach your, detach this forgiveness. I've been down this road. A lot of us has been down this road. So keep reminders so you know how you got here in the first place, and please 
do not destroy any more evidence. <laughs> you never destroy evidence of the narcissist's abuse. Never. So, I hope that helps. Congratulations on, on you getting healthy again. And congratulations on just feeling better as well. So, I'm very happy for you. So, thank you for another contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.